We've been to a couple cancer conferences before, and um, they've had doctors up from Mexico, and we're in Arizona, they're close by. Yeah. A lot of what we would call, I guess, alternative treatment options down there that aren't available in the United States. What are your thoughts on those? And you hear people say it was a miraculous recovery, to it was a waste of money. I mean, such a wide yeah. range of results. You know, international travel is tricky when you're perfectly healthy, and it becomes a next level of tricky if you have some mm -hmm. diseases that might be inhibiting your ability to travel. Mm -hmm. So that's always my first concern when I hear some of my patients looking into any international clinic, whether that's Mexico, Canada, Germany, Japan. There's a tons of great international clinics that do really cutting edge cancer care. So first of all, make sure you're clear to travel and make sure that that's not going to add extra stress or strain on your body and that you're going to be able to receive the treatments well. Um, second of all, you know, make sure that they're legitimate because there are people who are out there who are just trying to, you know, make some money off of mm -hmm. people who have cancer. Um, and there's a couple of resources that I usually point my patients towards if they're considering international clinics. And Dr. Ralph Moss is one of the people I will point them towards because he actually visits the different international clinics, mm -hmm. writes reviews on them, um, and has firsthand knowledge. So I haven't personally been to any of those clinics, so I can't really speak from like, oh, this clinic's good, this clinic's bad, this one's clean, this one isn't. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't been there yet. I'm looking forward to making those trips someday and I encourage my patients to do whatever they think is going to be the right choice for their body just again from that place of empowerment and uh, that's what is really going to feed your soul and yourself and obviously you want to keep a good team in the U.S. and your home base that you can always come back and forth to. Why are those treatments do you think still looked down upon as, as kind of quackery? here and why aren't there, if people want those options, why can't they get them here? Yeah. I mean, I know obviously the laws and things like that, but right. <laughs> will that ever change, do you think? I don't know. I don't know if that will ever change. I think that um, because of some of our regulatory things that we have in place with the FDA, I, I don't suspect that those will change. Most of the decisions of keeping some of those therapies out of the United States are based on toxic events and people who have ultimately died because of using some of those therapies. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're inherently wrong or, or bad for cancer. So our government tries to make calls about what's allowed and what's not allowed based on safety. And then it's up to the consumer to decide whether or not they're going to take the risk and go for something that might not be deemed as safe by the government. I see people do this all the time with uh, speed zones on the freeway. <laughs> the government thinks you should drive 65 and you frequently might choose to go 70, 75, 80. Um, that's dangerous. It's well posted that it's dangerous to take the road at that speed, but people make a choice and that's the same that we have available to us for our, our health care.